Well, good day, everybody. This is Joe Van Cleve, and today I have a little book review I'd like to go through. And the book is The Labyrinth by Saul Steinberg. And if you're not aware of Saul Steinberg, he was one of the most notable visual artists in the mid-20th century era. I've loved his artwork since I was a kid, and uh, I have an older book, a previous book, a Steinberg at the New Yorker, which I've enjoyed for many years, and now this new publication, The Labyrinth. Stay tuned. Saul Steinberg drew for the New Yorker magazine for over six decades, and he was a young Romanian who escaped wartime Italy in 1941. He had a degree in architecture, and you can see how this informs his artwork. He is a master of the line drawing, and he also uses metaphor and symbology very strongly in his work, and he's probably best known for his cover on the March 29th, 1976 issue of the New Yorker magazine, which has been probably his most widely known work and it's it's wonderful it's a geography of the of the mind of the New Yorker the typical New Yorker I guess you could call it but it's a wonderful piece but his work is so deep and rich he's done color illustrations for the covers of the New Yorker but he's also of course well known for his line drawings that filled the magazine and uh, I've enjoyed this uh, particular book for many years uh, and Saul Steinberg passed away in 1999 and, and despite him, his passing away uh, you know over two decades ago he has continued to enjoy popularity in the United States and his his work continues to be published in the New Yorker magazine and so this book The Labyrinth has been out of, it was first published in 1960, and it's been long out of print. And so this is a new reprinting of work that hasn't been seen in years. And uh, I'm interested, I haven't seen it either. It's still wrapped in plastic. So uh, I think uh, we're going to have to uh, do the old, uh, you know, the old, not the unboxing, but the unwrapping of Steinberg's uh, book here. So uh, let's do it, shall we? Try not to damage it. <laughs> All right. Don't you like a freshly opened book, especially one that comes wrapped in plastic film? All right. The Labyrinth, Saul Steinberg. Let's take a look, shall we? Okay, Steinberg's The Labyrinth. Ah, I like this color illustration already. The rabbit looking out of the man's head. That's funny. Ah, oh, yes. This looks like a, this color illustration looks like a potential cover art, perhaps. Okay, so it looks like it's a nice cream colored paper. Here's a photograph by Inga Morath of Magnum Photos. Saul Steinberg had a, a series of projects using masks that paper masks, and I think I have a book on that also. So this right here, this line drawing, oh man, this brings back so many memories because Saul Steinberg influenced me as a kid. I saw his work in the New Yorker magazine at the public library a lot, and his use of an ink pen, a dip pen, the way he did his line weights here, and this particular a pattern is like a like a maze, the kind of mazes that I used to draw. And what inspires me about this and brings back a lot of memories is the expanse of blank paper in contrast to the line and the texture and unevenness, the sort of organic quality of the lines. It's just a just so startling. It brings back so many memories. Ah, Steinberg, his classic signature. And uh, there's an introduction. And this is the kind of stuff he was so good at. This XY coordinate with some geometry, like an alligator casting a shadow. And then here is Steinberg himself, just a face floating in air. His nose is a, is an, a down arrow. Just the simplicity of his fingers and the pen. The line becomes the pen. 
th that is such a great illustration. And of course, the y axis pointing up. Th this is the such great symbology. This is the kind of stuff he was known for. Ah, oh, yes. This, this is like reflections in, it could be Venice, it could be someplace like that. I don't really know what city this was, but you can see how these buildings are reflected here. Uh, this one is reflected in here, and this is reflected here, and then right here is a view looking down from on top of a building at the guy and the sidewalk looking up in the drugstore right here. And then, of course, a clothesline. The horizon line here between the buildings and the water becomes a clothesline over here. How wonderful that is. Steinberg had a lot of these men, these illustrations here, these stylized men and characters, that kind of like profile characters. And, oh, wow. Look at this work here, this cross-hatched shading with a kind of a silhouetted appearance there. He was just the master of pen and ink. His ink work is just exquisite. And of course, I indicated earlier, he had a degree in architecture. So back in the 1940s, you know, when you were you had a degree in architecture, you drew with ink pens like this. And, uh, you know, this right here, again, brings back a lot of memories about mazes, the kind of mazes I used to draw. This is this is a dialogue, right, of some, some lady, some character talking. It's wonderful, wonderful stuff. Here you go. Here's a guy talking in labyrinthine language. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> And look at his crosshatch shading here. It is so cool. Well, there's a whole book here full of this wonderful stuff. And Steinberg's work is so deep and symbolic, as I said earlier. There's so much symbology. Look at this. The, the artist and his smock is, is really like ink stains. Oh, that's so cool. Well, I'm going to enjoy this book, certainly. There's a rich, rich amount of wonderful art here. And all of this is enigmatic and a lot of thought-provoking uh, work is, is in here. These line illustrations, there's so much thinking and, and meaning in, implied in here. Like the, this, right, for instance, right? Guy pushes a, the foot pedal in a trash can and the hand comes out pointing back at him. What does that mean? Or is this the um, Trojan horse, but it's, it's a guy, the typical New Yorker with a hat going to work and all the working people are going inside of him? What does that mean? That's very cool. A cat riding a peacock with a, a fencing foil and a, and a spear. Oh, this is wonderful stuff. So Steinberg didn't do just enigmatic, symbolic kind of geometric drawings, but he also studied life. He traveled uh, the world and did a lot of kind of what you might call street documentarian kind of photography. This looks like Cyrillic lettering, so somewhere in, in Russia perhaps, uh, you know, with a policeman directing traffic. And here's uh, another uh, illustration from the Soviet Union era, but I was interested in this particular illustration, this don't know. This is probably in Central Asia as well, and looks like in Russia in the context of the other pages. But look, this lady bundled up in her heavy clothes. She has a desk here, and it looks like maybe this is Pravda, the newspaper. But and then here is a um, blotter for a like a fountain pen, and look what is right here. So she has a typewriter. She, her hands are at the typewriter, and it looks kind of like, like a Royal 5 or an Underwood 10 style, an upright old typewriter. And then behind the typewriter is an abacus. Can you see that? Wow. Those are two things that interest me tremendously. And, and there, of course, there's a little paperweight sitting on top of these stacks of paper. That's, that's just a wonderful illustration. So he was more than just about semi-abstract symbology, but he, he documented real life, kind of like the way a street photographer would document life. He illustrated it with these wonderful line drawings. Just the simple comings and goings of people like right here. Or in this case, this interior scene of this house and all the pictures and artwork on the wall and 
the guy sitting there reading Pravda uh, or chessboard, uh, a teacup. And just a, uh, there's a radio plugged in the wall and looks like an extension cord hanging down from a light with a dual plug outlet, one for the light and one for the radio. It's just a wonderful illustration of an interior home. Look at the cat in the window. Isn't that special? That's pretty cool. Oh, and the, the, the uh, television antenna on the roof. Just uh, great stuff here. He was a real documentarian with his artwork. There's a whole series here where he's illustrating the relationship between people and their seated position within chairs. Like this one right here looks like one of those Herman Miller modern kind of chairs. And you can see this person is kind of assuming the posture of the chair itself. Even the martini glass kind of matches the angularity of the chair. It's just wonderful. Or in the case of uh, this guy here that's kind of disappearing into his newspaper and his table. Uh, it, it just with his cigarette smoke, it's just wonderful. Or the, uh, the rocking chair and the person's just kind of part of the rocking chair. And uh, this lady here, and really the, the main gesture of this piece is her forearm, her chin resting on her hand and her cigarette holder with the cigarette smoldering and, and the bracelet around her wrist. Just a wonderfully simple illustration that captures the whole gesture of that. And for instance, this gentleman at, at this uh, uh, this chair, like a wicker chair, and uh, with his martini glass and cigarette, it's just you know you don't need to show the whole his whole body with his legs. It's just this is the essence of what's going on there. So it's just wonderful the kind of work uh, Steinberg did. In the back of the book is the notes and it it basically tells where all of these drawings came from each page what circa what era it was the basic format of the work like the size of it ink on paper the format for instance whether it was published in the new yorker or whether it was just in a manuscript or unpublished or whatever so it really is a, a great a resource for studying in more depth the work that he did both of these books remind me of how much of an influence Saul Steinberg was on me when I was a kid, and it also reminds me of how much I've forgotten about how much I used to love to sit down and draw. I had a kind of sheltered childhood because of the relationship between me and my brothers and my our stepmother, and I spent a lot of time sitting indoors at the table with a pad of paper and a pencil or pen in front of me or going to the library. That was a lot of my growing up years. And so looking at blank sheets of paper and all the wonderful possibilities for line art that you could do with it was a big, huge part of my childhood. And I've forgotten a lot of that. It's amazing. And I'm reminded by Austin Kleon, the writer and artist, who is probably most famous for his book, A Steel Like an Artist. And it reminds me what Austin says about inspiration, how artists get ideas from other artists, and how we are inspired by artists. And I'm certainly inspired by the work of Saul Steinberg, and it really does want me to take up an ink pen and just start drawing, just freeing up my imagination and drawing whatever I want, even if it's loosely patterned, copied, or inspired by his work, there's nothing wrong with that, as, as Austin Kleon says. Steal like an artist, learn from other people, learn their what they're trying to do with their art, and maybe we can do something original once we, we learn a little bit. So this is a wonderful book. I'm glad I got it. It's a great resource for delving further into Saul Steinberg's, as is, of course, his Steinberg at the New Yorker book here. So I hope this inspired you guys. I, have, do you have any artists like this that have influenced you over the long part of your life that you maybe forgot about and maybe you need to go back and look at again? Well, Steinberg was one of those inspirations for me, and uh, I hope this was an uh, inspiration for you guys too. Inspiration for all of us to get creative, stay creative. Well, until next time, this is Joe Van Cleve, and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.